Is WWE SmackDown leaving Fox? Plus, we have an update on Matt Riddle's WWE absence and a released NXT star is teasing an in-ring return. It's all in the Cultaholic Wrestling News right now. What does the fox say? No thank you to WWE, apparently. Oh, well, there, there we that go. That is enough. a twist, isn't it? I was ready to do the full... Anyway, um, Dave Meltzer was speaking on Wrestling Observer Radio, saying the belief is that Raw and NXT will probably stay with the USA Network, although WWE is looking for a huge increase in the price for both of those shows, especially Raw, but even NXT. Uh, but for Raw, from uh, he says from 465 to $700 million. That's crazy. Um, as far as SmackDown goes, time will tell, he goes on to say. There's a feeling that Fox is not going to go for the $300 million, which is what WWE is trying to get out of SmackDown, and that Disney and Amazon are probably the two companies most in contention for it. And if it's Disney, I brought up, Melter brought up, not me, Melter brought up ABC or probably FX. Um, he says it's not out of the realm of possibility that it could be on ABC, but ABC on Fridays, they have had uh, 2020 and Shark Tank, which is actually <laughs> which is actually a pretty highly rated show. Meltzer there surprised the Shark Tank. I think that's their version of Dragon's Den. It's their Den. version of Dragon's Den, isn't it? But without yeah. the grumpy woman. And Meltzer, <laughs> Meltzer is like, oh, I just actually, that's a pretty highly rated show. I'd like to see Meltzer on it. Um, <laughs> oh, God, it'd be four hours long. They could. He's, he goes on to say they could change nights away from Friday. He says they're not married to to Friday. They're on Friday because Fox wanted them on Friday. So perhaps there's another night that ABC would want them, or perhaps they would uh, they want them to boost Fox, which they will boost greatly because it's the number one show on a weekly basis when it comes to cable on a year-round basis, 52 weeks a year. Mm. Melts are there around all the houses, but I get the gist of what he's saying. Yeah, because I think obviously in the in recent history we've gone, oh, SmackDown's on a Friday, it bookends Raw on a Monday. Yeah. But then like, SmackDown's been on a Tuesday, it's been on a Thursday, started life on a Thursday. I, I, my memories of SmackDown down R as a Thursday show. Yeah, yes. always feels like it's a, a Thursday show taped on a Tuesday. Or uh, a weekend show, which which we in the UK would then watch on Catcher. But but uh, mm. in terms of the America, a Thursday, Thursday night Smackdown. But then I guess maybe that's been eroded a bit by this Friday slot. And now I think of it more as a Friday show. Are you still more in the Thursday? I count? still feel more like a Thursday because ah. every week, myself and Matthew Gregg watch every episode of SmackDown from the beginning to its bitter end. Do they ever mention that it's Thursday? It's Thursday. Here we are. Well, they, they, I think they'll sometimes mention it, but obviously because it's taped on a Tuesday, they're very oh, yeah. cautious about where they talk about That's it. True. But you can listen to that on the Cold Holly podcast feed every Saturday morning. Mm. Myself and Matthew Gregg watching SmackDown from 2002 at the moment. Wow. I know, right? Uh, so in terms of if Fox doesn't buy it, that's an interesting thing that Dave Meltzer has said uh, Disney Amazon mm. now when we talked about WWE being sold before the merger was even a thing Disney of Disney and Amazon were two of the companies that were somewhat in the mix to to purchase them yes so maybe maybe it shows that those connections haven't yet faded away and they're still kind of looking to do business with each other even if it isn't an outright buying of the company for those though it's um it's all about ip with with big companies like this it's about having uh you know ip that you can merchandise out the wazoo and a content creating process mm. like they can just put it on and know that new content will be created all the time yes that's what they're looking for and wwe i think is Perfect, or well, a TV show like SmackDown is perfect for that sort of thing. Yeah, I guess that's the real strength of a of a of a successful wrestling show is that it just is a generator for new content all the time, isn't it? The story, as Triple H said once, the story never ends. It never, never ends. It does not. We'll keep an eye on that never-ending story at cultaholic.com. Uh, news for Matt Riddle side of things. So we reported earlier in the week that uh, Matt Riddle had had a uh, run-in with a police officer at in New York when he arrived back from. India and as a result there was a harassment case being investigated into that police officer and Matt Riddle was removed from Raw and numerous shows this weekend. Uh, PW Insider reporting that the word making the round backstage at Monday Night Raw among talent was that Matt Riddle was pulled due to a quote medical illness. As we noted earlier, Riddle is also no longer to expected, expected to work the weekend's live event in Idaho and Washington State and has covered over the weekend. There is an investigation into Riddle's interaction with a Port Authority police officer at JFK Airport following his return from Superstar Spectacle. Yeah, this is an odd one because it, it very much sounds there like this is unrelated, but it, it feels strange that these two things are happening so close together. But I guess we have to take that at face value and just, yeah, apparently it's it's um, unrelated and hopefully he's all right. We 
We didn't see Matt Riddle on Raw, but we did see Nia Jax. Uh, the final image She's on a 100% McMahon run WWE was Nia Jax smiling at the camera as she returns and batters Rhea Ripley. Yes. Good morning, mother. Be careful. <laughs> um, Asuka has come to Nia Jax's defense online. Yeah, she was asked on social media if uh, Nia Jax's return was the right move, and Asuka's response was, that question is rude and bullying. You're hurting her heart with this question. Are you really a person with a heart? If someone who has not been directly harmed by her denies her, I will fight the society for her. If I'm criticized for it, I don't care. Then somebody replied, reminding Asuka that Nia Jax has injured a lot of people or has been involved in several dangerous kind of botches, and Asuka said, are you the victim? La 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 la. <laughs> yeah. the end that get me. Yeah. Um, and then somebody said, if you wrestle Nia Jax and have, had to, and have to retire afterwards, we told you so. And Asuka said, I don't need to think about failure first, but if I did, I would be happy to play a lot of video games. <laughs> Asuka Fantastic. defending Nia Jax there. You know what? I, I, I guess they were in NXT at the same time together. They, they probably were, know they were well. at the same time. Like oh, Yuki yes. Warriors feuding with oh, Jax yeah. and Baszler. Absolutely. And, and I think I can see both sides of the argument here. On one hand, yes, Nia Jax does have an unfortunate history with... Uh, with um, injuring people or being involved in injuries that have happened uh, and I've always felt a bit sorry for her because people seem to wait for the next one and then all pile on on the other hand she never really helped herself with some of her responses on social media um, and some of the, her I guess her beliefs around the time of the pandemic and all that sort of stuff but I think here some of the people replying to Asuka and saying these things are kind of overstepping the boundaries saying like oh what if she injures you and Asuka's like all right mate like do you know what I mean like yeah. it feels a bit I, I think good on Asuka here she's defending a colleague and she's doing what she thinks is right and I think that's fair enough. Uh, Wrestle votes say that Nia Jax internally is listed as the number two heel on Raw in the women's division on Raw uh, just ahead of Trish Stratus and Zoe Stark and just behind Rhea Ripley who she's feuding with it seems in the short term. Yeah in Triple H's world everyone's a heel I think that's the <laughs> point um, but no um, I understand the the I think I understand them putting that feud together because um, even though Rhea is nominally a heel, she will get cheered in this in this feud. Even if she's part of the Judgment Day elsewhere on the card, I think that in this match, whenever it happens, Rhea's going to be, the, uh, she'll be the full baby face, excuse me. Oh, she'll be, without yeah, a doubt. She'll be the hero of the story. They will not be. The hero of Impact Wrestling tomorrow, I believe, are the silver briefcases surrounding the ring for the return of Feast or fired. Oh no. It's our two week special celebrating the 1000th episode of Impact Wrestling. It's tomorrow uh, and you will see 20 competitors in a, a, a battle it out over four silver briefcases in the return of Feast or Fired. One briefcase has a world title match, one has a, a tag title match, one has an exhibition title match and one has a fired slip which means they'll be sacked. Oh my God. Oh. It's one of the most extreme stipulations in all of wrestling and one of the most curious ones as well. Um, we've got some of the participants listed here and I'm just trying to scan this scene. Could any of these be released from their impact contract? Uh, we've got Heath, Steve Macklin, Moose, PCO, Kushida, Bupinda Gajar, Jai Vidal, Joe Hendry, and Yuya Uemura. Aww. Yuya Uemura. They it's Hendry's to... pal now. They're great, those two are. They're so much fun. I mean, I mean, if you sack them, there's a story you could probably tell. Yeah, like them trying to get back into the company. It doesn't necessarily mean that they are in real life fired because wrestling isn't it? real. But sometimes in the past, they have then left Impact. So it's hard to tell <laughs> what's going to happen. That's not all the competitors, by the way. That was a smattering of the 20 uh, full names. Now, the UK Invasion is on the cards for next month for Impact Wrestling. Uh, and we can confirm uh, in the last hour or so, it's been announced that Joe Hendry will, of Love course, him. be on the tour. So prestigious. I've said the wrong one. I did Local Hero. That was ages ago. He's so prestigious. And now, say his name. And he will appear. And I, ha I have a feeling in my waters they're going to do something big with Joe Hendry on the first night of this tour because they're in Glasgow. Ah, Scotland. They're in Scotland. Mm. I, I Whether we get Joe Hendry get a world title match in Scotland, I feel like you've got the chance to make something really magic there. It would be special. You oh, need to stop yeah. trying to shoehorn Scottish wrestlers into cards that have already been planned out. I Tom refuse Tom. to stop. <laughs> okay. I, can't, I literally can't stop. I don't know what's <laughs> happening. Uh, Joe Hendry along with Grado. Oh. Uh, Moose, Diana Perrazzo, Josh Alexander, and the Impact World Champion Alex Shelley are on the UK tour as well. Um, let me just check for a second. Um, put my phone off mute. And 
Uh, no, Scott Demore has not rang me yet about <laughs> Impact Wrestling at uh, the Walker Dome in Newcastle. Scott, I, I mean, I assume you've got the right number I've sent at your phone. Sorry, one times. second. What's this? I've got one from V McMahon who says, is Tom Campbell about? I'm trying to get Noam Dar booked for WrestleMania. Tell him I'm too busy waiting for Scott's call. Tell him uh, not to ring me. Uh, if, if Vince rings me while Scott is trying to oh, ring me just and we can't then. get through. Yeah. Come on, Scott, let's go. Uh, let's end on some, some news regarding a released NXT star who may be getting back in the ring. Yes, Mandy Rose, who uh, was asked on Instagram about her in-ring future, and she gave a very interesting answer. She said, funny you asked. Your girl may or may not be a free agent soon. Uh, so mm. that's very interesting mm. indeed. I mean, that immediately two promotions ping up in my head when she says that. Impact. And even maybe AEW. Um, both promotions where, well, Impact Wrestling is often looked at as like the best women's division in, in North America, where it's like the place where women's wrestling really can flourish. She'd do a great job there. AEW are always looking to bolster their women's division as well because they've got so many names but not as many stories. And if you need someone to come in who can really drive a story uh, and really be a great heel as well as she proved later in her NXT run, that's Mandy Rose. I feel, yeah, whilst I agree with that, I feel like she's a better fit at Impact. Yeah, maybe. I feel like maybe. Impact has a more eclectic selection in their knockouts division. Mm. And I think that Mandy would suit that sort of selection box of wrestlers yeah. far more than an AEW. Mandy's career, in my opinion. Mandy's trajectory in WWE was crazy. You look at it, it's all very strange. Like she, she was on the main roster for so long, went down to NXT out of nowhere and then suddenly decided, right then, I'm just going to I'm just gonna improve my in-ring ability tenfold. And she did and had an amazing title reign. And then obviously, yeah, got let go very suddenly. So best of luck to her, whatever she does. And for the latest wrestling news throughout the day, of course, you can check out cultaholic.com. Stay safe. Love you. Bye. Scott.